right it is exercise time again so in this video we will look at exercise number six so you can go to bit.ly.ex6 and then you'll get to this guest or this dart pad and uh, question one says you are given the following two lists use a loop to work out the total sales for the year as well as the highest sale for the year so you get this list that says sales figures and if you count you'll see there's 12 different values it is basically the sales figures per month so which means that this 2150 was the sale for january and this 2335 was the sale for december and so forth so it corresponds these two they are parallel lists so use a loop to work out the total sales for the year as well as the highest sale for the year so you'll need to sum these values and get the total sales and then also figure out which one is the highest uh, obviously we can see it's the 5533 which corresponds to august day and uh, you also need to print out the name of the month with the highest sale so this is the example printout the total sales for the year is that's the actual total so you can see if you can get to that value and the highest sale is then this one in august so you need to print out the month also so see if you can do the for loop in order to get all of these calculated and print out the specific month then for question number two given below are telephone numbers for staff members in two departments at a company so it's the department of it and the department of human resources you want to send out sms messages to all staff members some staff members exist in both of these departments so print out a list of telephone numbers making sure that no number will get two of the same sms messages thus all numbers without any duplicates so you'll need to go through this list and that list and make sure there's no duplicates so uh, just make sure this is not a normal list this is in fact a set so a set contains no duplicate values so i want you to combine these two and then have no duplicate values at all at the end so that we have got one list for these two sets of telephone numbers combined but there will be no duplicates in it so that we are making sure that uh, no number will get two of the same sms messages right question number three is a bit more of a challenge uh, I've given you the following declaration so you can see I've got three maps that I've declared there for you and that is a collection of key and value pairs and you'll see they are exactly the same but with different values so this one has got Peter and a mark of 40 this one's got Paul as the student and a mark of 76 and this one has got James as the student and a mark of 89 now what I've done then at the bottom is to say let's create another variable and that will contain a list now so it's squared brackets there which means this is a normal list this one is a map so we are saving the maps there you can see there's the three maps inside of a list and then I ask you to print out using a loop so you're going to print out Peter has a mark of 40 percent so you need to to get Peter and 40 out of out of this list and Paul has a mark of 76 so Paul has a mark of 76 and James has a mark of 89 and then the average of the marks is 68.33 so uh, you can use the sum marks variable there that will give you the sum of all the values or use that to get the sum of all the values and then you can work out the average by saying the sum of all the marks divided by the total number of students and in this case there's three students but how do you work it out if I gave you more in this list so um, just look at this one this is one is uh, quite a challenge so let's see if you can get this one sorted out also so there's three questions question number one question number two and question number three pause the video now and see if you can do those on your own right let's look at the solution for these okay so let's start with the first one there we've got the sales figures and we've got the months and uh, we need to use a loop to work out the total sales so somewhere I need to have a sum uh, variable or something like that so I think I'm going to start off with a sum variable that I'm going to set to 0, 0.0 so dart will automatically infer sorry a sum uh, will automatically infer a double for sum okay so we're going to use a loop to work out the total sales for the year as well as the highest sale for the year so I'm going to have a variable also here called 
highest. And I'm going to set this highest value to the very first value there. So which will be sales figures at position zero. So the idea is to start off with the value that we can take as the highest one. And then take this one and con, uh, compare it to the next one. And if that one is higher, then we replaced highest with this one, if this one is higher. Then we will see that one is not higher, that one is not higher. Then this one will be higher than 2,200. So we replace the highest with two, 3,255. And then we compare that one. And we see this one is higher again. And then we see that one is higher again. So every time we see that the value is higher than the previous value, that was the highest, we will replace the highest value. So we will just start off with the very first value inside of the list, just to make sure that we start somewhere and we can start comparing. Right, so let's look at the for loop quickly. So this for loop will be a, just a normal uh, for in loop. So I'm going to use, let's say, sale there for the variable name. And we're going to say sales figures. So for every value called sale inside of the sales figures, what do we want to do? Well, firstly, let's just add the sum or add to the sum. So uh, remember this variable sale, if you click on it, you will see it's a double value. So it's every single one of these values that will be placed into sale. So basically, I can just go and say every time take whatever is in sum and add the sale and then I will get the total sales at the end. So that takes care of the first one. The total sales for the year is this. So we will get that value from sum. Right, so how do we do the highest value here? So I'm just going to use a simple if statement inside of this loop. And the if statement will just check if this sale that we currently at the value that we currently at is higher than the highest value that we specified. Then we will go and say the highest value should be the sale. And remember sale is now every single one of these values. So we will first set the highest value to this one. And when the loop runs for the first time, it's actually going to compare to itself. So it won't change the highest. But when it compares this one, and it sees that sale, which is 2200 is higher than the highest that we have, which is the first one 2150, then we will replace the highest variable with 2200. And so it carries on and it sees this one, it replaces, it will replace that one. And then at the end, that one will be the highest. And in highest, we will have the highest value. Right, so let's look at the print statements quickly. So you'll see the first print statement says the total price is this. So let's copy that one. We want to have this print out. So I'm going to print it there. So please, I hope you didn't do this. The total sales for the year is, and now instead of saying that value there, we need to use our sum. So we have the sum there, which is currently zero, but after the loop, we should get the sum of all the values. But now if I print out that, you will see it gives me not a nicely rounded value. So I need to go and say dot two string as fixed and use it as two decimal places. And we can add the rand value there. So if I run it now, I will get the total sales for the year is 29390.90. And I think that's exactly what we add there. Right, then the second print statement that we want to print out is this one. So we're going to say the highest sale is, and now we need to get the highest value there. So I'm going to use the R still there with a dollar and to get the highest value there. So the highest value is this highest that we've got there. So I'm going to say highest. But I'm also going to have a two string as fixed two decimal places. Now, let's run this quickly and see if we can get the highest value there. So the highest sale is 5533, which is correct. It is this one. Right, so we've got the highest. But now how to get the month? And that is our challenge at this stage. So in order for me to get the month, I must know where this highest value is. So I know if the highest value is that one, which is one, two, three, four, five from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five from the bottom should be August, or it's position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, position number seven in it, and it will be position number seven, which is August as well. 
So in order to do this, just to not confuse and do too much in one print statement, let's try and get the index value of that highest value. So we will go to sales figures dot index of and the index of method will give me the index of a specific value in there. And the value that I'm searching for is this highest value. So now I'll get the index value of where highest is in this list. And that will be the same index where I'll get to that side. So then it's easy. I can then go and say, well, let's use the dollar sign there and let's get the month. So the month we'll get in the months list. So I'm going to say months there. At which position? At that index that we have there. Right, let's see if that worked. Perfect. It's showing August there without me typing August there actually. Okay, so this is how you can get an index of a specific value in order to compare it with another list that's parallel to each other. Right, so I hope you got number one right. Maybe um, this last print statement was a bit of a challenge up until there, or maybe just the last part was the challenge. But I hope you got that sorted out. Right, question number two. Given below are telephone numbers for the staff member. So we've got the Department of IT, we've got the Department of HR, and we've got all of these telephone numbers. And we want to print out a set of numbers that will actually be unique and will not get the SMS two times. So this one was actually very easy. You're going to use Department of IT dot union. So the union method will do exactly what we want here. And I'm just going to pass in Department HR. And if I run this now, you will get a list of or a map of values that is unique. So you can you can quickly check them there. But you'll see that we've got all the numbers in here without having any duplicates. So you should have used the union method there. Right. Question number three. Given the following declarations, print out using a loop. Peter has a mark of 40. Paul has a mark of 76, James has a mark of 89, and the average of the marks is 68.33. Just add some space here at the bottom. Okay, so we've got three maps, and those three maps contains key and value pairs with a student as the key and the value Peter, and the other key is um, the mark, and in this case 40. So it's the same keys everywhere with different values. And then we've placed these maps into a list. Now, if I click on this list now, you can see it's a list of maps. If I click on this variable, you can see that this is a map. So remember also to try and click on it and look at the deck documentation on what you actually have in front of you. Okay, so we need to print out using a loop. Peter has a mark of this, Paul has a mark, has a mark, and work out the average. Right, so we already have a sum of the marks. So in order to work out the average, we need to have the sum of all the marks. Okay, so let's start with a for loop there. And I'm going to say var mark in marks. So what will happen now, if you click on mark now, you will see that it's actually a map that I have in front of me. It's a map with key and value pairs. In order to sum the marks, so I'm going to say sum marks plus equal Go to this mark that's currently a map. How do you get a value out of a map? Well, you use the square brackets and you indicate the key and that will return the value. So we want to sum the marks. So I'm going to indicate the mark key there. But now it's got a problem because it says the argument type object can't be assigned. Let me just uh, show there. The argument type object can't be assigned to put the parameter type num, which is basically a number. It's 0.0. .0. So remember to use as something here. And because we're using it as integers there, I can just use it as an integer. So that mark is the key, and it will return the value, the 76 and the 40 and the 89 as an integer. And we add that to some marks. Right, so if I wanted the name, I would have just said Mark and then inside of the student and it will return Peter, Paul and James. But obviously we cannot sum those names. Okay, so this is the first part where we sum it and then at the end after the loop, we can work out the average. Now you can see that we need to print out Peter as a mark. Paul has a mark, James has a mark, which means that should happen inside of this loop. So I'm going to have a print statement here. And let's print out 
you can see we start with the name of the person. So we need to get this key to return the value for us. So I'm going to use uh, the at there, ach, the dollar sign. We need to go to this mark, which is the map, just like we did there. But in this case, we want to get the student's name. At the end there, we're going to say has a mark of, and then we need to get the mark, the same as we did there. So again, dollar, use mark, and get the key, which is mark. And then you will see that we've got a percentage at the end. So let's just add the percentage there at the end also. So let's just run this one quickly and see if we can get that those printouts done. Peter has a mark of 40%. Paul has a mark of 76 James has a mark of 89 100%. So now the only thing still short here is actually printing out the average. So let's use that one. And after the loop, we will print out the average of the marks is, and then we need to have something there. So you can do all in one statement, or we can first work out the average. So the average will be the sum of all the marks that we calculated inside of the loop by adding the 40, the 76, and the 89. It will be the sum of all of the marks divided by 3, because we know there's 3. But if you did not know how many values were inside there, let's say you, you're getting this from an external server and you're getting all, all the data from there and you've got actually a whole class of students that could be 28 in the class or 50 or whatever. So how do you know with what I need to divide? In our case, it's easy. We can see there's only three. So divided by three would have worked. But let's do this correct. So we're going to go to this list called marks. And we're going to call length on it. And that will give me the number of. So that will also return 3 because there's 3 in the list. And then we can say, well, the average is. And then show the average. And let's say to string as fixed and pass in the 2 again. So that we can get a nice average there. So if we run this now, we will get the average. And you can see 68.33. Right, that's it for this exercise. Hope you had something similar. See you in the next one.